Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got in front of me here are the modular trench sections that are coming along from Fickle Dice Games. Now if you remember that name, it's because they are the team responsible for Gloom Trench, and I've done quite a bit of their stuff on the channel, and they very kindly allowed me to have a play around with some of the pre-release stuff for this Gloom Trench trench system. Now this is going to be available, the Kickstarter is coming along mid-July, so I'll make sure that there is a link to the sign-up page for that in the description. And as always, they do have licensed printers all around the world, so if you ask me where you can get them, you're better off going to the Fickle Dice Games page and checking out where their licensed printers are. They're even in New Zealand, so folks from back home, you're sorted. <laughs> Now, what I wanted to show you today was a quick and simple method of getting something relatively good looking on the table. Uh, somebody once said to me that the essence of terrain is that it should be something which is visible but not obtrusive. And I think that really fits these things here. So I'm going to put them back together for a second and just grab a couple of miniatures just so that you can see how they'll look with actual miniatures on top of them. And they look brilliant. The firing steps are just large enough that they'll take a 25mm base. Uh, that includes these legion scaled guys, so again, brilliant for pretty much anything. And while I haven't covered them in snow like I have my gloom trench guys, I am pretty tempted to actually print off another run of these and pop some snow on them too, because I think that would look really cool. Anyhow, all of the paints for this one will be listed in the description below. Same as always, let's get started. So before we get to the painting, I want to quickly look at the trench sections themselves, because I think these are really cool. One of the things I like most about them is the fact that though they are a gloom trench product, they aren't like covered in spooky stuff. There are corpses and monsters and stuff that you can print out and attach to them, but the actual core of these uh, trench segments themselves, they're pretty generic. And I say that as a, a high compliment, <laughs> not generic as in, oh goodness me, I've seen this before, but uh, they'll fit anywhere. So if I grab one of the ones that I have painted, you'll see, you know, that will pop up on the Western Front, on any sci-fi game you want to play. I love that they aren't um, overly covered in gumph. I think they're quite neat. Now, interestingly enough, considering their size as well, they're actually resin prints. Uh, so you can see, ta-da, I haven't bothered to clean any of the support structures off the bottom because why would I? It's always going to sit like that. Now they are pretty thirsty, um, they are quite thick across the bottom, but if you wanted to, you could very easily you know, get a, a digital program and thin those out a little bit more, but I quite like the weight of them. So yeah, they do take a bit more in the resin if you want to print them just straight off like this, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I like, I like the weight, I like that they're sturdy, and that they're not going to get knocked around when you're playing with them. So with that in mind, let's talk about the painting. Now obviously, as with anything, you're going to want to prime it, and here I've actually used something a little bit interesting. I've primed this black first, and it's worth pointing out, I'll explain why in a second, but over the top of that I've sprayed it with a burnt umber. That was a Liquitex burnt umber, little rattle can one, uh, but I tend to find that they don't actually stick terribly well to a resin or plastic surface without something else underneath. They're not true primers. Um, the actual colors that I'm going to use today are not going to matter a huge amount. It's really more about the process and keeping things nice and simple. But if you do want this nice uh, chocolatey color, like the number of times I thought about taking a big chunky bite out of this, <laughs> Liquitex Burnt Umber is what I've used, and it's wonderful. Now this chaotic mess that's just appeared in front of me might give you some clues as to what's actually coming. This here is the bottom of a box, uh, this was the Cadian Army box, it doesn't matter all that much. Uh, what's important is that it is something that's going to be non-absorbent. Uh, we don't really need a wet palette for what we're going to be doing, but something that's not going to suck up all of the paint as we're working is going to be handy. Now what I have here, this is Calton Brown. Uh, Citadel hasn't made this in an age. This big pot of brown came in the scenery painting pack and it's wonderful. Uh, if you can still find one of those packs, uh, it's worth it just for this big old bottle of brown. But you can just as easily go down to somewhere like a stationery aisle or a supermarket that has art supplies. 
you just want a brown paint. So I'm going to very carefully pour out some of this, because I'm not going to need much, I'm only doing one segment now. And here I've got one of my big makeup brushes. You don't tend to have a lot of use for the really big ones, but when you've got them in a set, I might as well use them eventually. What we're going to do is get just a little bit of this brown, uh, in, I love saying it brown, <laughs> into your brush. It's a very silly day today, it's way too hot. And uh, once you've got that loaded up, just start going over everything. Um, probably a little bit more on my brush than that. You really only want just a tiny bit of the original umber showing in the recesses. Um, the important thing with this brown is it's going to make things a little bit warmer. And the transition between dark and light areas will then not be quite so jarring. So you can be generous with this and over everything. Now once that's dried, I've got another random brush and some Zandri dust. Now you could use, again, craft paint or something here. Uh, we're not looking for perfect, we're just looking for painted. And nice soft bristles I tend to find are good for this. And uh, as we go over the front of the sandbags, uh, don't worry too much if you come up close to where the dirt and earth is on these, just blap straight over the top. Now, Zandri dust will cover quite well, uh, but as this dries, like give it a couple of minutes and then see how it looks, because you might want to come back and give this a second pass over in some areas. Now, while that's drying, you can actually flick it around. Um, if you are painting a bunch of these at once, you're probably not going to have to worry about drying times, but all the same, what I have here is XV88, and still using just a bunch of the cheap makeup brushes that I got from Amazon. Uh, because they're cheap, and you can woefully mistreat them, and it won't matter. So, straight over. You see, I'm not fussed if I hit the uh, the metalwork for the, the trench walls. Just coat your wood with XV88. Now we'll flip this sucker around again, and what I'm going to use is dark sand. So, this time, we're going to dry brush it on. I'm going to load up my brush, get most of this off to the side here. And then start dry brushing both the sandbags, just to give them a little bit more visual interest. And as your brush starts running out of paint, like you notice you're not really leaving anything on the sandbags, run across the sand and dirt at the top there, and you'll have a pretty nice variation of colour in the earth. Now what I've got is a really long bristled, quite soft makeup brush. And I'm going to apply some Eldar Flesh to the wood. Now mind how you go with this, because you can very quickly add a bit too much. Uh, but I would suggest to you ordinarily, you want to add a little bit more than you would think. Uh, because as this tones down and dries, it's going to look a lot more subtle. Now we actually need a palette and a more ordinary brush. What I've got here, this is the Monster Brush from the Army Painter. And I'm actually going to flip this upside down. You'll see why in a second here. I'm going to use Refractive Green from Vallejo, although any army man green will do the job here. And I flicked it upside down because applying this to the metalwork, I always find easiest to start from the bottom and just drag towards the top, rather than starting at the top here and then finding it a little difficult to reach in under the uh, wooden panels. So I start at the bottom and just flick it very quickly up towards the top. We are not worried, really, about perfect coverage here. Now, at this point, I mean, you could put that on the table quite happily. It doesn't look too bad. And if you're looking from the school of visible but unobtrusive, yeah, cool, that'll do the job. But what I've got here, uh, I am going to shade these. I've got here a mix, equal parts, Lamian medium and strong tone. Now, you could try it with a, uh, just thinning that out with water. But I, I like using Lamian Medium, so that's what I am using. Uh, there are all sorts of other mediums out there, and if you want to have a play around with those, report back and uh, let me know how that gets on. I'm going to use this mix to shade this side of the trench system. And be quite generous with it too, because you really want it to, to settle quite heavily, make everything look nice and worn and grubby. Once that's dried and looks a little bit more interesting, mix up the same ratio again, so half and half, Lamine Medium and Soft Tone. 
We want a slightly yellower finish to the front here, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this with a big old brush. Um, I did find in the first couple that I was doing, I put way too much on and thought I would be able to spread it around, but instead all it did was run off and splatter all over my fingers. It made a god-awful mess. So, little bits at a time, but you do want to bathe all of the front. And there is our dried front and the back. So, from here, uh, the last thing I did painting-wise was to get a little bit of pale sand and just touch in some of the split bags. Now, you don't have to be particularly precise with this. In hindsight, I might have actually liked using a slightly darker uh, sand color, dark sand even, uh, but this works fine. Okay, now I've got all of those parts that I've painted already, and I've got a little bit of mixed up. This is roughly half and half PVA glue and water. So white glue, Elmer's wood glue, if you happen to be in the States, it's all much the same. What I'm going to do is just a few little dots of grass and some of the dirt on these uh, sections. And basically, the more of this you add, the older the earthworks are going to look because it will seem as though the grass has had more time to collect and grow. So you don't want to add very much of this. Uh, this is really just so that there's a tiny bit of visual interest to the front of these uh, these trench sections. So here and there, just a wee patch of grass. Away we go. And there at last, our trench sections are complete. Now, a few little dots of grass on the back as well will also look quite cool, so don't forget and don't skimp out on that there either. So I would give you one piece of advice if you're printing these at home, and that is to print off more of the end sections than you would think you might need, because <laughs> Instead, I've got what could be two quite good-looking uh, separate pieces and not enough ends for them. So, whoops, but something that you can fix yourself, of course. So thank you again to Fickle Dice for letting me have a play with these. They are really brilliant. Um, these are going to go on a couple of my boards pretty regularly, I would say. Uh, just the sheer generic nature of them. And again, I know it sounds like such a backhanded compliment, but I truly mean it. These are brilliant. They're going to fit everywhere. So thank you as well to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. You folks are the ones who keep me doing this if you've got any questions or anything, feel free to drop them into the old comment box below. And I'm moving my hand mostly so that you can see this isn't just a photograph. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.